Alan, welcome to Paper Napkin Wisdom. I'm really excited to have you here today. And thank you so much for inviting me, Govan. We obviously in very different climatic conditions, Australia, the it's middle of summer versus northern Canada, which must be pretty cold. Indeed. Well, we're having a beautiful snowstorm today, and I, and I can see the sun beaming through <laughs> the window behind you. So uh, it's a powerful reminder of things to come, but it's a beautiful day here. There's nothing more permanent than change. <laughs> Indeed. Well said. Uh, Alan, you, you are in the faculty of uh, EO's Entrepreneurial Master's Program at MIT, and that's where I most recently saw you. I, I've, I've seen you over my journey in entrepreneurs organization a couple times. Um, and, and you shared with me a, a really amazing paper napkin. Uh, it, could I ask you to read it out loud for everybody listening, please? Thank you, Govan. Revenue is vanity. Profit is sanity. Cash is king. And I should say queen for all the female listeners as well. That's great. So, I, I, I love I love you you know I love this this statement and it's very true it, it was very true for me uh, before you first uttered those words because I used to always describe my business by the size of the business every time and it was vanity it, it was pure vanity uh, it has no it had no reflection on how successful I was or at all how much cash I had in the bank so. So it was a transformational quote for me, but let me ask you, why did you share that message with me? There's so much that you have. And Govan, the answer is I've been advising business and banks now for the past 20 years. And every time I speak to a CEO, they always speak to me about their profitability, about their revenue, their margins, their profit, and what I always say to them is your profit is an opinion. You can manipulate your profit. And what I also always say is that we business speak Spanish and your bank speaks Portuguese. Every business owner I go into talks to me about their profitability and the banks talk about your cash flow as measured by your ability to service your debt. And, and you know, that, that it is such a difficult thing to get, that translation. Is, and I think you've said it beautifully in the sense that Portuguese and Spanish are very similar in a number of ways. And many times if one is speaking one, they can communicate with somebody who is only fluent in the other. However, there are things that are massive things that are misunderstood. Exactly. And that's why what I always say to an owner is that, you need to, if you're a really a competent CEO, you need to be fluent in Spanish and you need to be fluent in Portuguese. So in other words, a story of numbers should consist of four chapters. Chapter one is your profitability. And most business owners understand profitability well. They can describe their revenue growth, their margins, their overheads, their EBIT or earnings before interest and tax. But in my opinion, that's a quarter of your story. If you're a really good CEO or a really good manager, you need to have a process. And the process is step one, understand your profitability. Once you understand your profitability, understand your working capital cycle. So your working capital cycle is your receivables or your debtors, how efficiently your collections are, your inventory management, or in a service company, how quickly or slowly we actually uh, can bill for the services we've done. And obviously, how quickly or slowly we actually pay our suppliers. So it's very important that when you discuss your profit, the next thing you need to discuss is how effective is our organization in managing the days, your collections, your inventory, and your payables. About 60% of companies I see are profitable, but they've got very tight cash flow, and they do not understand why. And what I always say to the owner, every dollar you sell, chapter one 
is generating profit. But if you don't manage chapter two, chapter two might borrow more money to finance the cycle. Then chapter one is producing in margin, volume is detrimental to cash. So whenever chapter two absorbs more funding than what chapter one produces in margin, you've got a fast growth symptom. That, and that's that, I think that critical point that you just talked about how the working capital cycle can erode your cash position. It's a volume is detrimental to cash. And most entrepreneurs think that, hey, I've got a business that's got a 30% margin, gross margin. I, I, cash is never going to be a problem because I've always got some. But if your working capital cycle doesn't realize on that at an efficient enough level, then growth isn't really happening because the cash is gone. Because the only way you can fund your business is do you have enough cash flow to finance your growth? Because the banks obviously are not going to finance your total growth. So what you need to understand, how many CEOs understand what's going to happen the next dollar they sell? The biggest danger for a CEO is what you don't know about your business. And what I say to the CEO, can you tell me the next dollar you sell, what's going to happen to your cash flow? So in other words, what I said to you, there are four chapters. Chapter one is profit. Chapter two is working capital. Some companies have got a chapter three. They've invested in, in, in infrastructure, land and buildings, plant and machinery, or other capital. The result of your inputs, chapter one, profit, plus chapter two, working capital, if applicable, chapter three is your cash. So you cannot understand cash by understanding profit. It's like opening up a book and reading chapter one and say, I understand the book. You've got to, as a CEO, create a culture of visibility. Because if you understand the four chapters, you understand the bank. Because the bank's looking at your cash flow as measured by your ability to repay. And, and I think the thing that, many CEOs, many entrepreneurs listening to this show right now will be saying is, what do you mean profit is an opinion? What do you mean that profit can be manipulated? I mean, I'm open book about it. I'm showing everybody what my profit is and look at my great margin. How could any bank say no to me? How come investors are saying no to me? I don't get it. What's going on? Well, when you work in certain countries, there are three sets of books. You can have a book for the, for the business, you can have a set of accounts for your, either your husband or your wife and for the tax department. So you can really manipulate your profit if you want to. Your, so your profits and opinion, your balance sheet, you can write down your inventory, you can change asset values if you want. But the quickest way to calculate cash flow, if I say to you, you start the year with $10,000 in your bank account, and you end the year with $1,000 in your bank account, clearly you're going to say to me, I've had a negative 9,000 cash flow. Clear. So, so definition number one of cash flow in a business is every single month, you should be tracking the movement in your bank accounts plus all your borrowings. So cash flow or net cash flow is your change in your borrowings plus your cash at bank. And you cannot manipulate that because what I always say to companies, the bank knows your cash, they're lending you money, so should you, the CEO. You cannot look at profit and understand cash because cash is the result of chapter one profit plus chapter two, what's been the, the change in your working capital. Chapter three, have you invested in any other capital? The result is cash. The quick way to calculate cash is your change in your borrowings plus cash at bank. And then even more important, if you're a really a great CEO, what you should be asking yourself is, did I borrow money to finance growth? So cash flow is the result of growth. People need money to grow, but people also need money to finance management. And management is responsible for chapter one and chapter two. 
So if your if your collections blow out, bad for bad for cash. Inventory climbs, bad for cash. Reduce your margins, bad for cash. So every time you change the way you run chapter one, profit, chapter two, working capital, there's an impact on cash. What is the quality of your cash flow? Yeah, and you know, one, one of the things that I find really incredible <clears throat> about this is when we, when we think about borrowing money to finance growth, I think a lot of people misunderstand what that means. Because if, if the subtlety of what you said was borrowing money for, for chapter one, which is profitability or working capital cycle, is funding management, not funding growth. Absolutely. And, and Govan, one of the techniques which people can Google or whatever is a concept I've created called the power of one. And I've been developing analysis techniques that are used by 400 global banks, thousands of accounting firms, and many thousands of corporations. And after doing this for 20 years, I've realized that no CEO really understands cash. So step number one, the four chapters, is your process. This is how to actually understand your cash flow or to understand your business. But once you understand your status quo, the power of one says to you, what happens if I change my one percenters or my one day um, aspects in the business? So every business has got seven levers they can play with. Chapter one, profit, you've got price, volume, cost of goods, and overheads. Chapter two, you've got your receivable days, your inventory or work in progress days, and accounts payable days. Sitting on the desk of every CEO should be the power of one. What do the one percenters in chapter one or the one day changes in chapter two do to your cash? Because what a CEO should be saying is I want to improve my cash flow by a million dollars. How many one percenters or one day changes do I need to make to my business? Yeah. And if you understand your power of one, that's the code of your business. Yeah, and, and it's really, it's, it's so powerfully simple when you articulate it that way. But isn't it incredible that if, if, you, were, if you were just to ask the previous question, which was, you know, borrowing money to finance growth does not mean funding profitability or funding problems in management where you just have, and in brass tacks, to me, that means that you've got a, a cash, a working capital cycle that does not net cash on a regular basis, meaning that you're not bringing cash in fast enough, you're ending up out cash. And it's simply that you've extended too many days in credit terms. You're, you're too far in your delivery cycle before realizing any cash from any other source. And as a result, you just, you see that cash account balance go from $10,000 to $1,000. And it never gets better because your growing cycle keeps you in that negative cycle until you're bankrupt. Absolutely. And, and what I say to people, about 60% of companies I see are profitable, but they got very tight cash and they don't understand. I use the term, there are three critical cash flow measures. Obviously, today's interview is not the forum to explain the big three cash. But one of the critical cash flow measures are the next dollar you sell, what's going to be, the, what's going to be your cash? And as I said, if your business borrows more money to finance chapter two, so in other words, every dollar you sell, you should know how much money chapter two is borrowing. And that needs to be compared to how much margin you are producing in chapter one. So for example, if your business makes a 30% gross margin and your business needs to borrow 40 cents to finance your working capital cycle, volume is negative 10 cents to cash. The more you grow, the worse your cash gets. And I see that in about 60% of companies. And the incredible thing to think about is it actually never gets better. Like it, it just, the volume continues to be detrimental. And what, what we tend to do as entrepreneurs in that situation is just sell more. Exactly. Be, 
Exactly. And what I, what I always say to people, every time a bank puts pressure on a company, the company comes to me and says, Alan, the bank doesn't understand my business. And my comment back to the business is, do you realize the banks understand your cash flow because cash flow is the movement in your borrowings plus cash. You are looking at chapter one, the bank's looking at your chapter one plus chapter two plus chapter three because they understand your cash. When the bank puts pressure on you, it means you've got a cash flow problem and you can't service. If you've got a cash flow problem, you've got to fix it through chapter one or chapter two. And the way you're gonna fix it is by using the power of one. Yeah. So how many 1% as a one day changes do you need to make to obviously fix your cash? And, and it, it is really as simple as looking at that. And, and I think that what people, what, what I'm hoping that people take out of this is that it, the power of one is just 1%. It's a 1% tweak to, to price volume, cost of goods or overhead. You know, do we need to adjust our margin 1%? in any one of those four categories, and you're saying one day, meaning as if your average receivable days are, are 15, well, maybe you need to make that 14 and see what that happens to those numbers. It's, it's that simple. Exactly, and the power of one is a summary of your strategic plan because price and volume are the marketing people. Cost of goods or direct costs are your operational people. Um, finance and everyone is responsible for overheads. Collections is finance and your salespeople. Inventory is an operational measure. So everyone in your business needs to understand what they're doing to your cash because people will change behavior once they understand what they're doing to your business. And that's why cash flow excellence or visibility on your numbers needs to be understood. So and most companies I walk into just do not understand what the numbers mean. And, and, and I think we promote this, right? I think you're going back to your paper napkin. Revenue is vanity. We are all too willing to talk about how, how big and mighty our company is based on, uh, on that vain revenue number. And, and everybody in the company can know, oh, we have these revenue thermometers and targets that says we, we've, we've hit these numbers. No, nobody's got a cash target in their business. People, people hide yeah. that information. And you're saying that that shouldn't be hidden. Can I promote something? Please. I've, I've created a technique. If you go to a website called www.cashflowstory.com, which defines how any business should look at their numbers. So cashflowstory.com. Because the story of your numbers... I work with so many advisors who are doing strategic planning. To me, step number one is if, you, if you're doing a strategic plan, if you're doing a review of your business, you've got to understand what the numbers mean because the constraint in your business is your cash. Once you understand your cash flow and the drivers of cash, you can then work out what is the potential to grow your business or what changes do you need to make to get to your actual goal. So l let me ask you a question. You know, and, and lately uh, we've seen these, these acquisitions, these, uh, these acquisitions that make no sense to me in terms of valuation, like WhatsApp by Facebook and, and other things. And then you have now speakers coming up to entrepreneurs saying, no, EBITDA and EBIT doesn't matter anymore. In the value of your business, EBIT doesn't matter. And this is the thing that people are saying. W what would you say to that? What's your, what's your position? Depends on what type of industry you're in. If you're in an industry that obviously is selling a lot of blue sky going forward, that comment might be right. But I'm focused on the 90% plus of the SME market that is a traditional um, manufacturer, distributor, service type company where it's a, a, which it does produce an EBIT and it's a basic business. Yes, if you've got a technology company such as Facebook or whatever, it's a very different model. But I'm saying I like to focus on what is the traditional business look like. And I can say the traditional business needs to have very good visibility over their profit, their working capital, chapter three if applicable, and their cash. 
yes, it's beautiful to create those blue ocean um, companies that have got an infinite type of valuation, but those aren't the majority of companies that I see. Well, it's certainly not my business. Uh, you know, the, 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 the incredible thing I think also that, that, I'm, uh, that I took from, from you is, is not just how easy it is to fix it, but without regular management, without regular visibility on these things, is how easy it is to get off kilter as well and become, you know, lose the control of the power of one. And it just happens by one percent, these one day and one percent increments, doesn't it? What I'm going to do, and this will be hopefully beneficial to your, to your user base as well, I'm creating a monthly management process. So what to discuss in your business every month. Because again, I'm walking in, I'm on quite a few boards of fairly well-known companies in Australia. And what I found is that every meeting I would walk into they would discuss different topics, different periods. They wouldn't discuss the whole part of their business. And I've created a one hour meeting, what to discuss in your business every month regarding strategy, finance, marketing, operations, people. And I've implemented this in a lot of companies and it changes the way you look at your business because I hate surprises. And what I'm encouraging CEOs, if you can create a culture of visibility and a culture that we can show what's going on in the company, people then start to act in a very different way because you can't hide. People love to tell you the good news. What I want to know is tell me the good and the bad. Two heads are better than one and we can solve things in a non-threatening way. And I, and I, love, the, I love the culture of transparency. Uh, and I think that that's, it's, it's, it's a powerful thing to take away from it. I, I remember I mentioned Warren Rustand earlier on in, in a conversation with you, Alan, and he says, when you change the way you look at the world, the world you look at changes. And what I think you're focusing on cash and creating visibility within your leadership teams and, the, and like you said, the, the seven, within the seven levels of the company and that is your business plan. When you create that visibility, you change the way you look at everything. And everything is based upon simplicity. To me, on one page, you can show your financial performance. Again, I walk into these board meetings and they give me 50 pages. I'm saying, let me look at one page which describes my profit, describes my working capital, describes chapter three and explains my cash. Because if I understand that, I understand my performance and we can color code it, green, good, yellow, average, red, bad, and then we understand the bank. And then you've got a situation where your whole business is aligned. And just, just it, you have a, a software solution that does some of this too, right, Alan? Well, that's cash flow story. That's cash flow story. Okay, perfect. So, if, so cash flow story really took my whole talk and I've now – put it into a process that a business should be using at least four times a year, putting their numbers through it. It'll calculate your four chapters, your power of one. It'll do a high level valuation. You can do your projections, but it will tell you about your business. Can I ask you one last question for, for some of our listeners are, they have $5 million, $10 million companies, uh, very dangerous cash flow situations. Um, you know, on that line that you talked about, maybe over that line, in a red line. How quickly can the power of one transform a business? How quickly? Every business has got a different story. What you need to understand when you're diagnosing a business is where is your problem? Is it a profit problem or is it a, is it a balance sheet problem or both? So what the power of one will say to you Step number one, how many changes can I make in this business to get me back to where the business should be? And I'm saying in most companies, you don't need to change a lot of your one percenters. Most companies I walk into, they say, my cash flow is bad. I need to now use recycled paper, fly discount airlines, and they think they're going to solve their problem. Your story of your business, there are seven things you can change. Overheads is obviously one of them. 
don't take a little black dot in your business being um, cheaper airline tickets or recycled paper to think you're going to solve your problem. What you need to understand is your big white screen, your seven levers. And then you need to say, let's sit down with my whole company, with the marketing, the operational, and the finance team. And let's work out for every one of these levers, how many one percenters or one day changes can we make? And then you start to implement that. And the, and the turnaround can be significant. I would get an email a day from people who have implemented the power of one saying how simple it's been, but how transformational it's been in their business. That's powerful. Uh, it's very powerful. Alan, I, I, our time is up today. I would love to bring you back again sometime. What do you think? Um, this is my passion is to educate. So anytime you want, if people find it interesting, I'm very happy to help. Thanks so much, Alan. Thank you and all the best. To you too. Hey, if you liked that episode, there's a ton more like it on iTunes. Just search Paper Napkin Wisdom. Go to papernapkinwisdom.com to find the blog and pictures of all of the paper napkins. Plus, you can also follow along on Facebook, find Paper Napkin Wisdom on Twitter at Wise Napkin. My name is Govan J. Robin. This is Paper Napkin Wisdom. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day.